Hello, I'm Jim Cornall from The Biotech, and as it's not that far away from my home in Western Scotland, I headed out to Motherwell recently to cover the official opening of the new facility of Antibody Analytics. So we're a contract research organisation based in Scotland, and we've been going for around six years now. And we started off um, supporting developers of biologics, so companies who were developing antibodies that were kind of copying other antibodies, if you like, that were already approved for the treatment of various diseases. And we set up a, no a set of novel assays at the time, um, which were better than our competitors, and that's how we kind of earned a, a name for ourselves in the space. Um, but there was a bit of a downturn in the biosimilar industry a few years ago, and we had to pivot a little. And so we kind of turned our expertise and applied it to immunology and looking at drugs that drugs that are not just antibodies but are also kind of mimicking parts of the immune system or modulating the immune system. Um, and so we've got a series of kind of specialised immunology assays here now which um, model aspects of the tumour microenvironment in particular and we use those to look at these different types of drugs and how they interplay with the immune system. So is the end goal for you to be de developing drugs or what, what's the... So our, our business model is to support the developers of drugs and we support um, developers who are developing really innovative drugs who are really at the forefront of what they do. So um, they're called ad advanced therapeutics. Um, so they can be antibodies or they can be antibody based, which means they have part of an antibody as part of their drug. Um, and there's various types of these antibody drug conjugates, cell therapies, CAR T, that kind of thing. Um, we do a lot of um, kind of complex antibodies, so bispecific T cell engagers and that kind of thing. So we really want to be able to support the companies that are developing those types of drugs and be their first choice provider um, when they're looking for a certain type of assay or a certain type of skill set to help get their drugs through the discovery process and into the clinic. And do you work with companies globally or locally? Or? Yeah, so the majority of our companies are international. Um, so we have a handful of companies in the UK that are our customers, but they're almost exclusively in the US or Europe, almost 50-50 split between the US and Europe. So about 80% of our customers are outside of the UK. Um, and there's, you know, hubs in kind of Boston, Cambridge area and in California where a lot of these companies tend to congregate and do work on the types of molecules that we specialise in. So we tend to have lots of customers in, in these areas. Right. And um, you were in a different facility. That Was that more of a hub that you were in before you moved to here? Yeah, so that we were previously located at BioCity and that's where lots of kind of small biotech, life science startup companies kind of rent space and they kind of share facilities as well. So you have your own space there, but you share uh, goods and stores and that kind of thing. And it's, it's a kind of place to get companies started, if you like. But um, in the last kind of year or so, we kind of outgrown our facility uh, there. And we've got plans for the future that um, were way beyond, we needed the space way beyond what we had there. Um, so our founder, Andy, um, <laughs> took a bit of a gamble and identified this uh, facility that we're currently in, which we've repurposed and custom fitted with um, all the laboratory space that we need for the moment um, to help us enact our plans for the future. So we've probably um, fitted out about a third of the available space to us here. Um, it, it's enough for our current needs, but already we're thinking about phase two and uh, we're hoping to start um, the, fit, the fitting for phase two this year that's gonna help us enact all of our plans to, to grow. And in terms of, you mentioned the, the bio city that you were at before, is there an advantage to companies to being in a, an atmosphere? Is it collaborative or is it very much separate? No, it can be very collaborative and even down to the, the, the basics of, you know, you're missing a, a piece of equipment or a, a reagent and your, your bio city neighbours will help you with that. So that's one thing that we'll probably miss from that. Um, but we're quite specialised as well in the things that we do. We're fairly unique as a company. so. Um, in terms of the collaboration aspect, that's probably something that we seek more from, you know, kind of externally rather than just just our neighbours, I would say. Right. And as far as, was there any funding available to increase the size? Yeah, the company has had to take quite a, a significant amount of cash from debt providers to help us achieve our, our goals. Are there lots of grants available and things like we, that? Yeah, we were successful. We've actually had grants right from the beginning. Some of our earliest um, projects that we worked on were grant funded. We 
wanted to develop novel IP, so we went to Scottish Enterprise and were successful, I think, in a couple of smart grants. And more recently, we won a prestigious Innovate UK award to develop some novel IP that is becoming a new service this year. There are capital spend grants, which we've used for this facility, that contribute uh, based upon job creation in the local area. And do, are there things like uh, investment rounds and things like that, or is that in different kinds of... The company has been fortunate not to require any private equity or venture capitalist money at this stage, and it's given us the freedom to do what we want, really. And as long as we can keep that, we're very keen to. At some point, we may need to seek big funding, but at the moment, we believe we can do this um, based upon our, our revenues. And I guess as well, you, you're already starting to think about phase two and phase three and, and increasing size, so that's a good thing. Yeah, for sure. So phase two should be completed at the end of Q1 next year, and then we have various phases that we're hoping to complete over the next three years. And what will what will that allow you to do differently or more of? So we think it will allow us to offer truly integrated drug discovery services. We have, uh, I think, world-leading immunology at the moment. We can tie that with bioanalytical. And in the next couple of years, we hope to bring on regulatory services to support clinical and uh, product manufacture. And, and how, do, how does the word get out? to companies that want to use your services? So it's a mixture of things. Um, we've got, historically, we've had a very good sales team. Um, and so we brought in lots of new business. Um, only in the last couple of years, we managed to kind of change that a little bit. And we've got lots more repeating business. And being able to bring in these extra services and be, have more kind of integrated provision of services allows us to keep those customers after they've come to us for you know a one-off project because we've got a really unique ASI system that they've come to for example so that should make that easier and we hope to be able to support customers all the way through the kind of drug discovery process so at the moment we work up to the what we call the preclinical stage or GMP ready sometimes we call it internally and um, where we can develop a potency assay and tech transfer that back to a customer but then when we achieve our own regulatory compliance, then we'll be able to be the testing organisation that performs that testing for them as well. So we'll be able to support um, the drug developers as they progress through the clinical trials with the testing of their product. Um, and also hopefully we'll be able to support clinical trial testing in the near future also. And this building provides us the space to be able to bring in those regulated lab services, bring on the extra staff that we're going to be able to, we need to be able to support that as well. Right, because with a bigger facility, obviously, you're going to need more people. Yes, exactly. So where we're standing now is our kind of unregulated part, if you like. So this is where we can do the, the pre-clinical discovery type work. Um, when you get to having GMP or GCP accreditation, there's a, a certain level of paperwork and quality system that needs to go behind that. And it's, that's probably going to be part of a separate regulated lab, which will be part of our phase two build. Right, okay. And are there any... Um the success stories that as part of the, the innovate grant last year we successfully created a cell line development department and that's acting as a feeder organization across the business where we can develop novel assays across the board to support immunology services as well as gmp lock release assays for the future and, and so i guess the last question would be fast forward into the future what, what's the what's the next short term and long term look like for the company so this site can support about 250 people and with that, we'll have broad capabilities from early phase discovery work through the clinic and ultimately lot release testing for biologics. We also hope within the next 12 months to bring on specific development services for cellular therapies as well. Uh, so one thing that's quite unique about us as a contract research organisation is that we've taken the time to invest in our own research and development team. Um, so we have an on-site research and development team and they focus on developing new services, completely new services that we can bring in and then also developing the assays and the breadth of the services that we currently offer. Um, we also offer secondments into that team so our operations staff get a chance to go there for a year, 18 months and they get to learn extra skills um, and drive their own research which is unique in a testing organisation because obviously most of the research we do is on behalf of customers. So we think that puts us in a really unique position um, and it also means that we're able to respond quite rapidly to changes in market demand that we see from speaking to our customers. Um, we take that information back, we're all on the one site, we talk to each other and we're able to use that information to um, develop new solutions to overcome the challenges that our customers are facing there and then.